Hi, my name is Dana Platon. I'm a vice president for New York State PTA. I'm here today with Lucille Vitali. She is also the vice president. Hello, everyone. And we are here today to present a workshop called Conflict Support and Resolution. We are recording this, but we will be interacting with you today live in the chat box. So if you have any questions or comments throughout the next 30 minutes, feel free to type it in there and we will get, you know, try to answer questions for you and try to interact while you're also still trying to pay attention to the workshop. So um, if we advance the first slide, Lucille is in charge of that. Thank you, Lucille. Um, there are many reasons um, for conflict support and there may be something going on in your unit, your region, um, a committee that you're a part of and where you would feel that you would need someone to come in and give you some support. Um, really important to reach out because it would ensure the health and wellness of your PTA um, so that your PTA functions. And uh, we, you know, the number one thing is to fulfill the mission of PTA. So there is always someone there to serve as support for volunteer leaders um, and to provide information and best practices. So you should never ever worry about bringing somebody in if you need some help and support. Okay, benefits of conflict. Not all conflict is bad. There are many benefits to conflict, which can make leaders better. Okay, that's very important to know. And it could serve as a great learning opportunity. From every conflict comes great learning. And that's what this slide is showing you. Good conflict support can leave you with a feeling of accomplishment and can also help identify new leaders through the proper proper handling of any situation. So really important before you step in, um, there are some essential questions that you have to consider. First and foremost, is this a PTA issue? Um, perhaps it's really not um, for your uh, PTA to be concerned about or to get involved with. It may be something to involve your principal or your superintendent, your board of education. Uh, so before you move forward, make sure that it's a PTA issue. issue. Um, something also to consider is whether or not you personally should be involved in it. Um, you may be too close to the situation. You may benefit from a certain outcome. Um, you may have certain biases. And so just be honest with yourself and decide whether or not this is something that you personally should be involved in. Uh, perhaps it's a legal situation and certainly you would not want to be involved in that. And maybe as you know, we go through all the slides, you'll see that maybe this is actually a job for a professional. So um, let's talk about the different situations and the different scenarios as we go forward. Okay, the, the most important thing you need to do is to ask the questions for you to determine whether it is a PTA issue or whether somebody else should come in and, and handle it. And that's really okay if that happens. If you feel that this is not a PTA issue, it's not related to PTA. It may be a school issue or a district issue, which is important for you not to handle it. Then it has to be you know, handed off to somebody else. Is it a personnel or an employment issue, which we know we would never handle. So that's something also that we have to leave to the other people or professionals to be able to handle that. If it's not a PTA issue, please decline further involvement and suggest the appropriate course of action that should be taken. Again, let's um, look at some of these questions that really need to be considered before you move forward. So we already said earlier, um, you need to decide whether or not you are the right person to um, jump in and, and help with this conflict. Um, it may be that you've been involved in it in some way, maybe not recently, but if it started, you know, weeks ago, months ago, perhaps you were already a part of it. Um, and do you have stake in the outcome? That's really important to consider because if the end result is something that you want, then you're probably not the right person. You need someone who's more objective. Um, you also don't want to tell anybody how to solve the problem. You don't want to give them the solution. You want to help them work it out themselves. Um, you don't want to push for any particular end result. And um, you want to also make sure that you don't feel bullied about the situation, as well as the other parties don't feel bullied from somebody who was involved with the situation. So it's really, you know, before you dive in, you really have to consider all these different things. If this is not something that you're comfortable with, if this is not in your comfort zone, something that you feel that you know enough about, um, you may not be the right person to step in. And then just look around and see who may be able to help. 
Okay, here are some tools to use. Okay, it's very important for a successful conflict resolution to use the proper tools. And here are some of them listed. Always follow law and regulations that apply to nonprofits. Use Robert's Rules of Order when you can. You want to always use your best practices and refer to bylaws and procedures of that particular unit if that's necessary. Listening is the most one of the most important things you can do in conflict resolution. Listen to as many people involved is extremely important to get the facts. And it can also give you a very fresh perspective, okay, um, to whatever situation that it is. Always be self-aware and have an understanding of conflict resolution before stepping in. Very important. You want to know a little bit about what you should and shouldn't be doing in conflict resolution before you go into actually try and resolve anything. So really important, we do not give any legal advice. We're not lawyers, we're not professional. Well, I, and even if you are, it is not uh, appropriate to be giving any kind of legal advice. We certainly do not offer any mental health advice. We don't diagnose anybody. We do not there to give therapy. We're not professionals. Um, you may think somebody has some particular um, diagnosis because you know somebody else who has that kind of diagnosis and you're comparing. Refrain from that, stay away from that. You may not, may not do that, you're not a professional. Um, don't solve the problem for them. Let's work it through with them because situations always occur and you never know if in the future, if it's something that they will not be able to do on their own if you've solved the problem for them. Um, we cannot enforce the laws. We don't make um, the government regulations. We don't make the school rules, district policies. Those are all things that you would need to call a professional for, whether that professional be law enforcement or a superintendent or a principal. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the police, but we can't enforce any laws and we cannot force people to take any kind of specific action. An end result that you see as being ideal may not be the proper end result. So you cannot force anybody to do something that is not comfortable for them, that is not appropriate for them. And um, you wanna make sure that you first find out what their ultimate resolution would be before you tell them exactly what your resolution will be because that's not your job to do so. Do no harm. Here at PTA, we are here to do no harm. Um, if you have evaluated first that you are the right person to address the issue, remember, we never give any kind of a professional advice, always maintain confidentiality. Very, very important. Get help and support for yourself if you need it and hand off the situation if you feel you are not the appropriate person to handle it. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I'm really not the person to, to try and solve this problem. I'm going to, you know, uh, hand it off to somebody else or would you like to hand it off to somebody else? There's nothing wrong with that. Like Dana had said, if you feel that you have a bias um, in this particular situation, then you might not be. You will definitely not be the right person to handle it. So there's nothing wrong with handing it off. Okay. First and foremost, you want to offer a quick response. If somebody reaches out to you, you need to right away contact them, let them know that you recognize that there's a situation um, and let them know that you are there and that you are going to move forward. But with that said, don't react immediately until you have more information. Um, make sure that you speak to people, that you're documenting everything, that you get you know, all the different sides of a story because we all know he said, she said, he said, he said, she said, she said. Um, we need to let each individual know that they've been heard. Um, we want them to know that we care about what is going on and that we will help them solve any issues that they have. Um, very important, you want to document everything, you want to take notes so that each individual that you speak with, you write down exactly what their concern is, um, what their problem is, whatever the situation calls for, you want to write everything down and document that. Um, you want to also just set up a single point of contact. So if you are the person who was handling this resolution, then that would be you. You don't want someone to go to several different people and you know create any other kind of situation. Um, 
if you um, get an email, for instance, and other people are copied on it, hit reply all, let them know that you're handling the situation, but do not move forward with involving everybody at the same time in every communication. Instead, you should talk to them all individually. Um, and also make sure when you ask questions that they're not leading questions, they're not loaded questions. You want to make sure that you are being as objective as possible. You want to hear what they have to say. Don't lead them in any direction so that they're actually now um, saying what you want them to say. So whatever questions you ask, um, just mirror what their response is back to them so that you can make sure that you've heard them properly. Active listening. I can't stress how important listening is, um, especially in conflict resolution. It, it is so important in so many aspects of life, um, but especially in conflict resolution, it's really important to listen carefully. Um, you always wanna be a good listener and always be patient. Show nonverbal listening cues, like texting on your phone or looking down or scrolling, scrolling through your Facebook is not giving them very good nonverbal listening cues ask questions and always remain neutral. Now, of course, when you hear a situation, there might be um, information that you might feel that you wanna uh, instinctively take a side on. That's not something that you ever wanna show. Even if in your head you're saying, well, that person doesn't seem like what they're doing is the right thing. You never wanna show that. You always wanna remain neutral. Ask for clarification and always find out what the parties want. You're not here to tell them how to resolve this conflict. You're there to listen and to have them resolve their conflict. Um, you are not there to solve the situation, but just to help facilitate them solving their situation. And take a lot of notes very carefully. That's something that you want to have very good documentation on. Okay, so really important, we are not taking sides. It's important to be objective, to stay impartial, and to ask unbiased questions. Um, we know that when situations arise and people get a little hot under the collar, um, people start to vent. We've all done that. But if you are trying to res um, come up with a conflict resolution and trying to move forward in a positive way, um, people will want to vent to you, but it's really important to not agree with them, to let them have their say, but just listen. Don't interact with their venting. Um, you really should not be enabling or allowing any kind of complaints about somebody's behavior or about their personality. Uh, again, not a comment on mental health. You can allow them to vent it's one thing to get all those feelings out. It's another thing to start being mean or bully or you know, just really um, downright um, nasty. Uh, you know, We all get angry about things. That's okay to vent in that way, but we, you should not be allowing people to be calling names or saying really mean and nasty things. And um, you, know, you want to, to um, just tamp them down and you don't want them to get all riled up. Um, especially if there's any bullying or harassment going on, you have to make sure that you keep everybody at a level um, at a level down so that they're not getting all out of control and it makes it worse. Lucille? Yeah, I am. I'm trying. Okay, there we go. <laughs> How's it working? Okay, bullying. Dana had mentioned bullying. What is bullying? Well, it comes in many forms, but in all ways, it is very hurtful to the recipient. Some may not even realize that they are being a bully. However, if they've ever acted out of frustration, gossiped, or made someone feel uncomfortable or bad about themselves, they may in fact have shown bullying and maybe not even realize that they were doing it. So as someone being called, so as you being someone called in for conflict resolution, you wanna never allow bullying and always ask if you see it, how you can help, um, especially if bullying is the issue. Um, bullying can never be enabled, okay? And a clear conflict plan should be made if you see that bullying is present. 
Um, these are things that can be extremely hurtful to people. And unless you, you know, nip it in the bud and you stop it, it's something that can continue and cause even more problems. Okay, so really important to think about. If you don't address the bullying, if you let it continue and you let it fester, then those individuals control the outcome. If they have the upper hand and you let them continue to behave as they are, then you're never going to um, manage to um, take care of the situation. So we have some suggestions for you. Um, many PTAs, we do it on the New York state level. We have a code of conduct and we require that all the members of our board of directors read through it and sign it. And really importantly, that they understand what they've signed. So we have a conversation um, and a discussion about it every year, even though many of us have been involved for a long time, it's just a reminder that we have certain expectations and uh, our board members have certain responsibilities and we expect that everybody would conduct themselves properly. So that's something to think about to, to put together a code of conduct for your unit or your region um, if you don't already have that. Um, again, documentation is so important because you wanna make sure that we have or you have rather um, all the information and you won't forget what somebody may have said to you. You won't misconstrue what somebody else has said. You don't have to mix up you know, comments from one or another if you have good documentation. Um, communication is really important. Let everybody know that you're dealing with the situation because you're dealing with individuals one at a time. Don't leave everybody else hanging. Don't, you don't have to give them all the information, what, you're, what everybody is telling you, certainly, but you do have to let them know that you're, that you're talking with others, that you're trying your best to manage the situation, and at some point you will all come together to come up with a resolution together. Um, do some team building activities. There's so many different activities that you can find on the web. Just Google it. Um, I will just a little plug. I'm going to be presenting a workshop on icebreakers and team building tomorrow morning. So um, we have lots of suggestions for you. And it's a fun way to just kind of work out the kinks. If you have any kinks in your team, it's a great way to expand on all the strengths in your team. Um, also, come up with a plan. If something is not working in your uh, on your board because of an individual or individuals and you're having a hard time coming to resolution and they're not following a code of contact and they're not being appropriate. Um, you should have a clear dismissal policy as far as um, perhaps removing somebody from a board or a committee. Something to think about, something to discuss with your uh, executive committee. Um, and also um, you wanna make sure that whatever happens just doesn't escalate further and further. So have a plan in place um, in case it gets out of control. Who else will you go to? What else will you do? Okay, when dealing with conflict resolution, these are the possible situations that might come up. These are things that you might see, um, and one of them will be answer shopping. What is answer shopping? That is the person that maybe doesn't like the answer that you give, so they go to five or 10 other people to get the answer that they want. So you might see that situation, that there might be a person that has answer shopped. Um, several people, same complaint, where you might have many people complaining about the same thing about the same person. Um, so you might have that kind of a situation. Um, these are just possible situations. Social media posts. Well, those of you that know me well know that I am not a big fan of social media. And the reasons why are not for the good reasons where you can advertise and do really good things, but for the really bad reasons that sometimes make people say pretty hurtful things over social media where a lot of people, a large group can see them. So you could be in a situation where there has been a um, social media post that maybe wasn't too friendly to a particular person. And that could be a you know, situation. These are just possible situations that you could see. Um, requests from administrators for intervention. You could get a request for, from a, an, an administrator to you, or you could have a parent say they want to go to an administrator and bring this to an administrator so it can go both ways. So 
these are just some possible scenarios that you might see in conflict resolution. So just be aware that these types of things can come up. So I would just add something to the social media piece. I know that many districts have moms groups and obviously you can say whatever you want on your personal page, but once you get involved with another group on Facebook or any other social media, it can inflame the situation. It can be like a cancer that starts to grow through your community. So I would suggest to you if somebody posts something um, to address it, obviously off that social media platform, contact them through a messenger type um, uh, situation. Like on Facebook, they have a separate messenger. They do that on Twitter as well. Find out an email address, make a phone call. It's not appropriate to have any kind of conflict for others to see on social media. If somebody is starting something on social media and you hear about it or you see it for yourself, definitely jump in, contact them personally, contact them individually. And you know, perhaps you, they, if you request that they remove that post, they will. That would obviously be terrific because you know what happens, somebody makes a post and the next thing you know, there are 400 comments about that post. So try to get ahead of that if you can and uh, do not take anything to social media. Do not let anything escalate on social media yourselves. Definitely, I agree. Okay, so now moving on, um, sometimes uh, you're gonna need some help and assistance. You may not be able to deal with this on your own. And we would suggest that you don't deal with it on your own if at all possible. You should put together a team and come up with a plan. Um, come up with, if you can, two people, no more than four people who can help you, who can be unbiased, who can be objective. Um, if you are the president at that point, I would remove myself from the situation um, and see if somebody else could jump in and help with this action plan. Um, it just usually is better for the president to stay out of it. Um, if you feel that your group that you've put together needs some assistance or guidance, then absolutely jump in, but try to stay outside of the situation. Um, designate someone to be the lead. And, um, you know, your involvement really shouldn't be all hands on. It should be kind of from the background, from the side. Um, we've said it over and over and over again. So, you know, please forgive us for repeating it, but you have to gather all the facts. You have to lay them out, document them, because we've all been in situations where we feel like things are not being handled properly and that people aren't um, listening or they're not paying attention to the details. So if this is a really bad conflict within your unit or region or committee, then it's really important to make sure that you are taking care of every possible scenario and listening to everybody's point of view. Um, so we, unfortunately, this is an hour and a half presentation. We're used to doing a presentation like this with a room full of people where we can interact. And that's not easy here on this recording. Um, so we don't actually have a copy of the action plan to share with you. We are limited to 30 minutes, um, but in the chat box, if you would like a copy of that action plan, just let us know um, and we will certainly email that to you. Um, we uh, expect that we will be able to upload this PowerPoint as well as the action plan at some point into um, a site where uh, all the other workshops for the conference are being loaded. So um, that will be um, you know, something that you can access as well. Um, but lastly, I just wanted to say for this slide anyway, I think we still have another one or two, um, but make sure you have a clear endpoint. So don't let it fester and continue for weeks and weeks and weeks and months. Just know that if you're starting with something today that give yourself a 30 day deadline or you know two weeks, whatever it may be, just to make sure that um, you know exactly at one point you expect that this will all be resolved. Very important to know when you need help. If the resolving of the conflict is beyond your capability, and there are many times that it will be beyond your capability, you need to seek help and assistance. Um, reach out to your UDA president, your council president, your region director, and think about where your starting point is. Like if you're having an issue in your committee, let's say you're on a committee, the first person you want to go to is not your region director or bring it to state and call up the New York State PTA president. You want to start 
within your unit, maybe the chairman of the committee should be the first person that you go to with this conflict. Um, if it's something that needs to go a little beyond that, you can go to the unit president. And if there's no resolution there, you can go to the council president. So you wanna move up in a succession when you have a conflict. Try to take care of the conflict at the lowest level that you can and try to keep it as you know casual and friendly as you can. But if it's not being resolved, then you do have to move it up and that's for sure. Um, there, they are there to assist you and to guide you when you're in need. So don't feel that you don't know what to do because there may be a time that you just don't know what to do. And even speaking to somebody else might help you to be able to help them resolve the, uh, the uh, situation. So you might be called into a situation that you really don't know a lot about and it might be a little overwhelming for you. That's why it's important to have other people with you that we discussed in prior slides. Um, but still, it might come to a point that you're just not the person and, and you need help. And that's totally fine. And that's what you know other people are there for. Okay. So I don't really know how much time we have left because I started my timer probably five minutes after we started. Um, it was a challenge to record this. So I appreciate that everybody understands that. We will have a few minutes left in uh, to talk about whatever you wanna talk about via the chat. Um, and of course it's a texting chat, it's not a real chat. But if you have any questions or concerns you wanna contact us, these are our email addresses. Um, I'll be honest, come Sunday, my email address will change to president in newyorkstatepta.org. So I'm very excited that I will be um, uh, running, I'm running unopposed, so I will be elected as the, your new president, and I cannot wait to get that started. So as of Sunday afternoon, my email address changes to president at nyspta.org, but my emails will continue um, to be rolled over if you should use this one. So I hope that you got something out of this today, and um, if you have any questions or comments, please refer to the chat box, and we will be here to um, interact with you. So... Thank you Thanks all for, for joining here. us. My, my email will not change, so you can still reach me at vpvitali at newyorkstatepta.org. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.